in today's gospel, um, the disciples are sad. They're sad because their friend Jesus had died. And they are afraid because they wonder if they're going to be next. And they have locked themselves in a room. The room where they had a last meal with their friend Jesus. And where they remember him. We do that too sometimes. We, <clears throat> when we're sad or when we're afraid, um, in a similar way, we can kind of close ourselves off from others. Maybe sometimes we lock up our hearts. And what I found powerful about this story, I guess, is the way that Jesus reaches through the locked doors to be present. And this appearance, of course, surprises the disciples and his friends. And that this surprise brings them joy and peace. Uh, the Franciscan writer Richard Rohr, he describes life in this way, that we are constantly faced every day with death and resurrection moments. That every day we live this tension between how we see the world or how we want to see the world and how it's presented to us. And often, like the apostles, we're disappointed or afraid or angry that things didn't go the way we wanted them to. And there can be long periods in our life when we have to live with these unresolved feelings or tensions. I know um, when I live these times, it does help me to reach out to my friends um, to be with me in those moments. And, and as a parent right now, I'm living that uh, right now. I'm, I feel a bit lost, kind of like the disciples do. I'm trying to figure out what my place is as a parent at a different stage of my, my children's lives. And in the midst of these times where we're waiting or, and, or longing, sometimes we can get kind of almost stunned by a moment. Sort of like the disciples were when Jesus came through the locked doors. We get stunned with a moment that wakes us up and causes us to see something in front of us in a new way. And we might have different ways of describing this feeling. Some call it awe and it can leave us with this deep joy and, and probably even a deep suffering all at the same time. There's an uh, African-American author named Barbara Holmes, and, and she calls it joy unspeakable. And she, she wrote a poem about this, this idea of joy unspeakable, and it goes like this, a beautiful poem. Joy unspeakable erupts when you least expect it, when the burden is greatest, when the hope is gone, after bullets fly, it rises on the crest of impossibility. It sways to the rhythm of steadfast hearts and celebrates what we cannot see. I want to share a picture with you. This is a picture of Mike, everybody knows Mike Arnett, and lots of people also know Marcel, who's on Michael's right. But some of you may not have met Andrew. Andrew is on Michael's, Michael's right, our left, I guess. And Andrew is, um, we welcomed Andrew uh, to the Red House a few months ago, um, because he is 
studying in a program that requires him to do a placement. And so we invited him to the Red House. And um, he was, he's been invited to come and spend two days a week um, to be at the Red House. Um, maybe sometimes to be helpful, but mostly it's to build relationship with, with us at the Red House. And um, when Andrew arrived, uh, he was quite nervous. He's kind of shy and um, he wasn't sure what to expect. And, and he was meeting new people, which isn't always easy for him. And wasn't sure what people would think of him. He'd grown up actually in our neighborhood in Richmond Hill and he knew where Daybreak was, but didn't know what went on there behind the walls. Andrew hung his coat and he was given, you know, the usual tour. And he was uh, finally invited to sit next to Mike Earl Arnett. And Mike was in the front room uh, and he was, as often he is, he was engrossed in one of his favorite action flicks that he's seen a hundred times, of course, and uh, just as engrossed as he always would be. And Andrew sat down next to Mike, not, not knowing what to say. He wasn't sure if he could always catch what Michael was saying, especially over the loud backdrop of the car chases on the screen in front of him. So Andrew was surprised when, surprised, maybe stunned even, when Michael reached over and took his hand. And without skipping a beat, Michael said, over the sound of screeching cars on the screen and through the stutter of his voice, he said to Andrew, you're home now. And maybe perhaps this was an alleluia moment, a moment of awe a moment of resurrection that penetrated Andrew's fear of the unknown. God is there in all of it, in all these simple moments that wake us up. God uses all these circumstances in our lives on this journey into our heart. God is calling us I have a life And it always shines It shines in the day And it shines in the night Sun is bright while I will be shining because I have a light. I have a light.
Oh, just got another text from next door. <laughs> Christina said it's absolutely perfect. 